it's Sweetie Pie and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a request. I very rarely get requests. It's just a thing. My channel's not that big. I do this for fun. I do it because I've met some awesome people and you know there's nowhere you can go but up, right? So anyway, after that little escapade, what I was getting at and oh my gosh I'm going on a tirade. If you don't want to hear this, 30 seconds. My husband always tells me that I will go on these freaking tirades where, can you see that? On these like tirades where I'll be talking about something and then I'll talk about something else and then something else and I'll have like five stories going on at once. That's what I kind of feel like this intro is starting as. <laughs> but yeah, today we are doing a request from one of my, well, my favorite subscriber. Sorry, I love you guys so, so much, but she is awesome. Carrie, this one's for you. I actually went to Barry and I saw the Pulp Fiction one and I picked it up so that I could, you know, just use it and, you know, show you swatches, give you my opinion. Um, and yeah, that's what we're going to do today. So we're talking about Rude Cosmetics. This is a U.S. based brand, a California based brand, but they are made in the People's Republic of China. I have two of their palettes. They have so many palettes, products, oh my gosh, on their site. But I will get into that a little bit more in my review. So if you guys are interested, these are the two palettes that I have. I have the Fairy Tale Book 3, and I also have the Rude Awakening Pulp Fiction. They had so many more, like they had like five more, but you know, a girl only needs a couple. Anyway, let's get into this review if you guys are interested in seeing swatches and all that all right, stuff, guys, then stay so tuned. Let's do the information first. As always, if you do not want to hear any information about the company, about the palettes, all that good stuff, then you can fast forward it. I will hopefully leave a timestamp. Sometimes I do, sometimes I forget. But you can you'll see. I usually do, you know, uh, the information, swatches, the look, and my final thoughts. So yeah. Anyway. The information on this is an American brand, very close to the same price on their website as I purchased from Showcase, which is kind of like an as seen on TV Canadian store that you can go and purchase like so many different brands. And they are all authentic, like completely authentic brands, completely authentic products from what I can see so far. Anyway, when I researched Rude Cosmetics on their website, uh, it's actually not that expensive to buy directly from the site if you want to. Uh, they were close to the same price. I think they were $17.95. I bought both of, like, both these were, I think this one was $25 and this one was $20. Whatever stock they have that it, they have more of, they usually put the price down so you can get a deal. But on the Rude Cosmetics website, the palettes were super, super cheap. There were so many products, palettes and concealers and foundations, and you could definitely do a full face of Rude Cosmetics. Uh, one palette on there, the shipping to Ontario, Canada, which is where I live, was $5.55 for one palette. It actually goes by weight. Some companies do it like that, some companies don't. The only problem I saw with Rude Cosmetics is that when you went to their return policy, it said there were no returns, no refunds or exchanges, no orders. Like I didn't find a place where you could take your order back if something got broken. Like I don't know if they do that. So that is a huge downside to their website, but if you do have a showcase, you could totally pick up Rude Cosmetics there. I'll try to see if there's other places. I'm sure eBay and stuff like that, they probably have Rude Cosmetics as well. But yeah, either way, that is the information that I have for these palettes. Like when you actually look at them, there, there are 35 eyeshadows in every palette or in their 35 color palettes. And they are made to look like books. So when you see them, they are literally made to look like books. Uh, there is 1.5 grams in each eyeshadow. Fairy Tale has 17 mattes and 18 shimmers. And then the Pulp Fiction has 23 mattes and 16, 12, no, yeah, 12 shimmers. So, you know, they vary from palette to palette. If you're wanting more shimmers, Fairy Tale, 
obviously. And if you're wanting more mattes, especially if you're like subculture, you know, uh, Anastasia subculture, this is actually a really pretty palette that kind of reminds me of that. As for shelf life, the fairy tale has an 18th, 18 month shelf life, whereas the Pulp Fiction, it's only 12. Not sure exactly why. They both have kaolin clay, talc, ultramarines. They are made in the People's Republic of China, as I said before. Other than that, I didn't find anything, you know, totally insane in here. I didn't find any, like, crazy ingredients that I noticed. They apparently are cruelty-free. They have it on the back of all of their products as well as their logo and all that good stuff. The ingredients are listed right on the back of the product, which I really do like when any company does that because, you know, it's just easier to research for that one. <laughs> but yeah, guys, let's go into swatches of these. I am pretty excited to swatch these because some of the shades in here, they are just so banging. But then they're with all 35 color palettes, in my opinion, I find that there is a lot of duplication, a ton of shades that look pretty much exactly the same when you get them on the eyes. So that is the one downside to a palette like this or a Morphe palette or any of those types of palettes is that you're going to get some redoing of shades because 35 freaking shades is a lot of shades when you're trying to stick to one color story. Anyway, guys, let's go into the swatches. I'm excited for that. And yeah, then we will go into the look and uh, kind of my final thoughts and what I have to say about these palettes.
So obviously there is so many, like, and I mean so many looks you could do with just the Pulp Fiction palette alone. I do think there's a lot of, like, like there's a lot of shades that I don't think you would need, honestly, but I'm going to take, you know, just shades out of both of the palettes, um, the Rude Awakening Pulp Fiction and the Rude Awakening, or no, it's not, that. that's the Rude Awakening. This one is Fairy Tale and this one is, oh, hmm, this is book three. I'm sure I've probably already shown you. I am filming this before I film my review just to like let you know because I wanted to have the look on throughout the re review, you know, see how it goes. But yeah, I'm just going to do like a warm look today. I am also reviewing the Natasha Denona Bloom palette on my channel today. So that is what I have on my cheeks and all that jazz. I'm not too bronzed up, so I'm just going to do a really nice kind of, not neutral, but like warm crease. And then maybe I'll pop one of these like really bronzy shimmers on my lid. Nothing too crazy, but I wanted to show you some of the colors anyway. So I've got my brushes right in front of me, and I guess I'm going to use this palette as my mirror. And I've said this on my channel before, I, this is not my preferred way to do my makeup. My preferred way is to like sit you know, on the floor or, you know, at my desk or something. I'm actually just using the Revelation, Revolution Cut Crease Canvas on my eyes today. This is my second time using this and I really like it. I think this is a great formula. It's a lot like my, um, my LA Colors base. Like, see the pigment in that? Like, I actually have to wipe a little off. Oh, and this stays a little bit tacky, like after just got, oh, I just got angry grandpa shirt a little bit dirty. Ooh. Anyway, I'm going now. The key with these shadows is you really, really do not want to overlap them too much because they just will not stick to each other very well. So just I will step by step you through the way I would do it. And yeah, that's the way I found is the best way to do it. A lot of the warmer shim, like a lot of them, a lot of the warmer mattes work a lot more pigmented than it seems some of the cooler ones. So anyway, um, yeah, let's just go into this. I'm going to start with, you know what? Uh, I want to do kind of a mustardy look. So I'm going to go into this shadow right here in the palette. My brush is right on top of it. And I'm just going to start. This is a Morphe M573. Going to dust it off a little bit. Uh, these can be a little powdery. And I'm just going to work this going on the, like, on the top of the crease. Not in the crease. Just on top of it. Because, again, as I said, you really don't want to like mix shadows too much when you start to try to overlap these shadows too much they just don't tend to overlap very well but like that yellow is so cool i like i've never been really into mustardy yellows i think it's just because i've never really had a look that panned out that i really liked but uh, I've done a few looks with this mustard yellow that I really liked. And then, hmm, what am I doing today? I feel like I'm going right into like a mustard look. Oh, goodness. No, let's go into an orange because I know I want to play with a few of the oranges in here as well because those are really pretty. But I'm just going to go into like this orange right here in the Pulp Fiction palette. And this is just a really small kind of crease brush. 
and this one I'm going to work right like right below that yellow shade but not quite in the full crease that was a really pigmented orange too like that was really nice Just like that see like that is really pretty so let's go into a couple of the shades in the fairy palette and out of both palettes I think I do like the fairy tale palette more I think that the pulp fiction one if you love the shades in like the subculture this would be right up your alley because it is like it's just like that type of tone I just, some of the shimmers that are in there are nowhere near as good as the ones in here. So it's a mixed bag. I think that the shimmers and the warm mattes really good in the fairy tale palette. Whereas like if you're looking for those mustardy yellows, those like green shades, this is really good. Oh, and that red shade right there works beautifully as well. I might throw a little bit in there, but I'm thinking I'm going to use this one in the fairy tale palette. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to go in with, hmm. Yes, I'm going to go into a little bit deeper of an orange. So in the fairy tale palette, there's this orange right here. I'm just going to dive into that one. This one I remember being really beautiful and pigmented. So I'm excited to dip back in. And now we're getting even lower into the crease using that same little brush. And I also do a lot of patting motions with these eyeshadows so that the color kind of lays flat on my eye. And I'm going kind of right in on that inner corner. And you can also go right back into like the yellow shade or the orange shade and, you know, fix that up. It, I don't think they're unblendable when they're worked together. They actually are really beautifully blendable, but it's just the colors will kind of muddy if you, one, put too many together, or two, try to, you know, put one on top of the other too much. I found there were some difficulties, and that's why I kind of just do it like this where I'm more placing a color, blending it a little bit, and then going into the next color. Not a ton of fallout with these shades either. Um, some of the darker shades you will definitely get fallout with, but I've been pretty fortunate as to not getting much fallout at all. A lot of the time the only fallout I will get will be right on the corner of my nose. I don't know why, but that's like where a product likes to go. All right, so now I'm going to go into that red that is in the fairy tale palette, and it's right by that really like beautiful blue. God, I can't wait to do swatches for these two palettes because that will be a process. There are 35 shades in each palette. And I'm just laying that red right on the corner just to deepen up my eye a little bit. And as you can see, see it just doesn't want to lay very well because there's already color on that spot. So I'm just going to dab 
can kind of go back in with that yellow shade and kind of dab. Because it will start to look patchy if I'm not careful. Which, it just, it is what it is, you know. Not everything needs to be absolutely perfect. I think that this is really pretty, though. It's working out pretty well. I do want to take my sponge, and I'm just going to use a little bit of the Hourglass. This is their, ooh, I think it's dim light, diffused light. And I'm just going to go under my eye right here just to clean that up. I think it's getting a little bit crazy. All right, so let's go into the lid shade, and I have already got it picked out. I want to use this one in the fairy tale palette right here, and this is a really pretty bronzy shade. I know it's just a bronze, but I also there was a little bit of fallout on that yellow shade there, but it is really nice. As you can see, like it's pretty well blended. I know there's a little bit of finickiness, but you know, sometimes things don't always come out perfect, and that's not even the eyeshadow's fault. It's just me. Anyway, I also think that this red shade here is so, so, so pretty. You wait until you see the swatches. These ones right here are more shimmers than, like, really foiled metallic shades. There are some really foiled metallic shades in the Fairy Tale palette. If you can swatch these, that would be perfect too. Anyway, let's close this palette for now and let's just go into that lid shade. And I think I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of the cut crease. I don't want to do a full on cut crease today. I want this to be a little simpler and a little bit more, like, not messy, but you know, a little bit more effortless. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that and just pat it on the lid there. See, and it just makes it white again, you know, so you got that base. And honestly, you need so little of that little, that canvas primer from Revolution. And it really does like white out your lid and give you a fresh base to put your shadow on. I love it. Again, just my finger with this shimmer. So, so pretty. And I'm just going to pat it. Oh, wow. Like, look at that. That is so pretty. And this I would call like a full-on metallic. And I'm just kind of rubbing it outward in, not into my crease, but you know, just feathering it. Like, look at how pretty that is. Oh, mm. And I didn't even wet that shadow. Like, that's just with the cut crease base and bam, pat, pat, pat on my eyes and that looks so pretty. Like, I am so in love with that. Now we need a little Anacona highlight, and I'm trying to look for one right here. Mm, those ones are a little pink. Let's go into this palette and see if there's, I know there is a shimmer in here. Hmm. This one is a little bit pink as well. They have like a green shimmer in here, but green's not going to go either. Hmm. Put that one. Come on, what do I need? You know what, we're just gonna go and we're gonna use this one. This is kind of, it's a little bit of a duochrome actually, and I'll just point to it for you guys so that you know what I used. It's this one right here. And I'll show you in the swatches a little bit later, but it does have a little bit of like pink slash. So I'm just gonna pack that on the corner of my eye, and I'm doing this like a wha-bam. 
All right, guys. Well, I'm just going to throw on some mascara, and I'm not even going to deal with liner today. We're just going to do mascara, and I will be right back, maybe with a lippy as well, to show you the final look. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look, and I hope you enjoyed the swatches. Be all end all. I'm sorry if you can hear the vacuum. My husband has a problem. <laughs> but be all end all. What I think of these shadows is I think they are really good for the, the price. I think that they do need some work, though. I think if you layer them too much, if you layer too many of them on top of each other, it's going to look muddy and gross. It's not going to blend well, and it's just going to be kind of a mess. I don't like setting my base when I use these shadows because I just don't think, oh, like, some of them are just not pigmented enough to sit on top of another shadow really well. That's why, um... I also, in the look I did today, I wish I had done the darker part here. I wish I had done that first because I think that would have worked out way better. But needless to say, you got to kind of see where I have some issues with these shadows. My favorite palette is definitely the Fairy Tale palette. I really like the Pulp Fiction, but this, like this shade range here, I just think there's too many colors. I just think that there's so, so many. There's so many browns that look so alike, and the shimmers in here just aren't quite as shimmery as the ones in the Fairy Tale palette. The Pulp Fiction, though, for some reason, feels a lot more like luxe. It feels heavier. I don't know. It's just odd. But it, the artwork on these is absolutely phenomenal as well. The Pulp Fiction one, like, how cool is that? Like, come on. They really do put a lot of work into the packaging and, like, the beautiful artwork on the front. This looks like a, like, Rolling Stones cover or something, or, like, Metallica or something like that. Like, the unicorn and, like, oh, I love it. But, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you, uh, you know, got some information out of this with the swatches and the look that I created for you guys. And I hope you're able to take away, you know, whatever you want from this video. If these interest you, you know, I uh, will try and leave a link down below for them and I hope you guys have a really wonderful day night evening whatever subscribe to my channel sweetie pie here on YouTube Melissa in the world and yeah like this video if you enjoyed it Mwah. bye